Welcome to IBC 2013. I'm Joe O'Halloran, Editor-in-Chief of Rapid TV News, and I'm here at Pascal Portelli, Senior VP Connected Home of Technicolor. Pascal, welcome to IBC. Thank you. It's a very interesting time in the TV market, pay TV, fee to wear. What do you see as the general trends and dynamics? Well, there are several trends, really. Um, first of all, in, in, in some countries, uh, the pay TV is uh, you know, is, is a victim of the industry, like, like the rest of the economy, of slowing down. So, it's uh, pay TV operators have gone from trying to grow their subscriber base to trying to make the most of the base they have. You know, in some countries like Italy or Spain, um, you know, people are actually um, the number of subscribers going down rather than up. So, part of the theme is how do you know? If I'm a pay TV operator, how do I make the most of the existing base I have? Uh, you have, of course, the, um, uh, the advent of new, uh, new you know, TV delivery mechanism. OTT is a big theme and has been the big theme. OTT started as, you know, a kind of a laptop, PC, tablet kind of thing. Now it's coming to the TV as well. Uh, there's a question mark as to what mobile operators are going to do. Some of them are starting to look at better experience for TV. And, of course, different situation in emerging markets where there it's still a matter of conquering, acquiring as fast as possible new subscribers in a cost-efficient manner. And we've had you know, a lot of activity, we have big customers in Brazil, in India, there those are still very much booming markets. Well, there's some complicated trends and dynamics, Pascal. What do you see as the biggest challenges to market development? Well, Part of it, again, it depends on the countries and the yeah. situation, but a lot of it has to do with uh, improving the customer experience so that customers stay, are happy with the, uh, are happy with the service and don't switch to, you know, don't do cord cutting essentially mm -hmm. or cord shaving mm -hmm. and don't switch to alternatives. So it's, uh, there's less tolerance for a uh, service that is not you know, uh, pristine and so mm -hmm. the, the, the key is to keep customers by providing a second to, no, to non quality of experience. And so being just as good as OTT obviously is not an option. Mm -hmm. Operators have to be significantly better in terms of experience. One of the things we've seen over the last couple of weeks have been the launch of the Google Chromecast dongles and other such devices. And that's added to the new smartphones, tablets, laptops, etc. How hard a task has managing that become? Well, it is, it is obviously a more complex environment. So uh, pay TV operators, the traditional ones, have either the option of um, you know, letting the, the, exper the experience fragment and control part of it or not control part of it. Or another option is to engulf and, and you know, make OTT part of their managed experience. Uh, it's a more diverse infrastructure, it takes new skills and it uses the network in a different fashion. But there is a way for them to make OTT part of the have the, have the customer remain within, within their realm, remain within their, their, their control experience. And that's what uh, the most advanced operators are trying to do, uh, make the most of OTT rather than uh, being too defensive about it. You just mentioned quality of experience and ensuring that. What's technical are doing to make that guarantee? So there's a number of things. We have, you know, we are experts in home networking technologies, so a lot of the experience now has to do with multiple devices in the home, uh, very diverse uh, devices, obviously. So a lot of things, a lot of things we do is making sure that those devices communicate with each other uh, in a seamless way. It takes uh, software, it also takes optimization, for instance, of Wi-Fi. Uh, doing a lot of work, for instance, uh, for the uh, IP set top boxes or dongles, making sure that the best Wi-Fi experience is available, so that. You know, even though operators may be doing a nice job in the uh, network, uh, if it uh, falls apart when it comes into the home, mm -hmm. that breaks down the whole experience. So we're making sure that uh, from, you know, from, from to the very end point, to the last device, the experience stays consistent and a high quality experience. Speaking of high quality, we've seen here at the show HEVC come to the fore. What's your plans for HEVC? So we've been presenting at the show uh, a number of uh, uh, devices that support HEVC. We have some of the very first ones. We had uh, three set-top box we're showing here. Uh, we're big believers that HEVC is a major uh, threshold for the industry. Obviously, um, better uh, compression efficiency. So that means that customer that couldn't be reached uh, can now be reached. So for instance, for telcos that are using DSL technologies, some of the customers were not within reach, they become within reach. They can, some customers that were only eligible to 
SD now become eligible to HD. So obviously a big deal. Uh, CapEx savings as less bandwidth is, uh, is uh, necessary to pro you know, offer the same service. And obviously also a big enabler for 4K, for Ultra HD. Ultra HD with the uh, pre-existing compression algorithm like MPEG-4 takes a lot of bandwidth. Obviously with HEVC it becomes much more realistic to broadcast, uh, you know, real, for instance, real, real time live channels for sports. And 4K, well, how's that developing, Pascal? So we are presenting at this show uh, our first 4K set-top box, um, which is actually a uh, real product, not yet general, general availability, but a pretty good, pretty advanced product. And we are going to continue developments, adding new uh, enhancements to 4K. For instance, we are showcasing here um, our high dynamic range technology, which improves the picture quality uh, in challenging scenes with a lot of uh, um, you know, contrast or with uh, poor luminosity. So we think that on top of higher resolution like 4K, there are also other enhancements to the picture quality that we can bring. And consumers are going to become more and more demanding as they see 4K. They're not going to be, they're not going to be tolerant to artifacts on the picture. No. So that's going to increase the expectations and we have to match up those you know, increased expectations. Wrapping up, Pascal, if we're here in 2014, how are you going to ma manage those expectations? How different the market is going to be? Well, the market is going to be different in the sense that uh, we believe, as I was uh, alluding to, some mobile operator will have launched uh, offerings. So there will be probably more overlap mm -hmm. between what mobile operators are doing and fixed operators for, you know, obviously uh, LTE or 4G uh, is now deployed in a number of countries. Op mobile operators have to make the most of their network, try to monetize it as much as possible and not set it just as a big pipe. Fixed operators have a bit of the same problem. They don't want to be just a dumb pipe. They want to provide services. We see that happening also on the mobile front. So that might, that may be a change. Obviously, we expect 4K to be a much bigger deal. We're in the early adopter market, you know, only a few hundreds of thousands TV uh, uh, being sold right now. Probably going to get into the million next year. So it's going to be still an early adopter market, but much more sizable. Uh, so we expect uh, that 4K will be a continuing theme. We don't expect that like 3D uh, that has been stumbling a bit. We, mm -hmm. we believe 4K will, be, uh, will go all the way and will be successful eventually. Indeed. Pascal, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lovely.